<laughs> um, yeah. Who is this for? Uh, this was for monthly magazine, Italian magazine. Uh, kind of recent, about six months ago. Uh, editorial. editorial. You can see there's a lot of freedom there. Like there's no clients caring that there are wrinkles, there's a, uh, a naked guy. Even if that the blanket is from Burberry, so we had to use the brand. And there's Max Mara, Fendi, Trussardi, like all the big brands for the fashion magazine. And then um, you grew up in Milan. Yeah. And how did you get into photography? How did you start? Mm, it was always a passion. I started taking pictures when I was a little, basically with the Polaroid cameras. You know, those ones with the uh, flash that goes off and then you have to replace it. So basically, each of the Polaroid was, um, let's say, 50 rand or something for one picture. So my parents decided to give me a reflex, a Pentax. And they were like, 35 millimeters, no more Polaroids. I was like, okay, cool. I like it. And my father was uh, passionate about uh, photography. He also had a Pentax. So 10 years old, they gave me the, the camera. And that was just uh, for hobby. But then uh, through school, a friend of mine was like, uh, I want to be a model. And I was like, okay, what do you need? I was like, I need pictures. Like, they were accepted pictures. And I was like, oh, something with clothes on. So um, we took a suitcase. We went on the lake uh, in a very touristic area where we were not allowed to shoot anything at all. So we were like hiding hiding. We entered the location, the gates, with her full of the curlers, <laughs> lashes, like lots of makeup, lots of stuff. Uh, but we managed to go through and uh, just started shooting, changing clothes in the middle of the tourists, uh, in this Roman columns. Uh, it was fun. So I was like, okay, sounds like fun. Let's keep on experimenting. And then she was like, okay, and then I want to be a model for Vogue. And I was like, what is Vogue? What exactly is Vogue? <laughs> so there's was Vogue Italia. And I liked it a lot. So I was like, okay. I should, instead of being a doctor, I decided to go to a school of photography. It's like a university of photography. I aimed for the passion rather than for the money, like hoping to turn it into business. And it quite worked, yes. <laughs> So I decided to stick to it, basically. And um, so the, I still have my Pentax, but uh, as a museum of cameras. Because I had the 35 millimeters, then I have the Mamiya uh, RZ67. Uh, I even had the Leica and the Rolly. I used the Rolly for, for fun. And that was a disaster because I came back from a holiday with my rolls in Indonesia. And uh, they were all ruined by the X-rays because they are not uh, x-ray safe, mm. but they didn't tell me. Like, but of course, I should have noticed when they told me to put my suitcase through this huge x-ray. was like, that's going to ruin something. So. <laughs> but they were fun. At least the, the pictures, I have some white stripes, creative, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> it's OK. But they're still on the wall of my house, like on the, in my bedroom. They're still hanging there. because. Uh, I was very attached because uh, uh, I also printed them because I used to print all my negatives, develop them and print them so before digital and then I decided to turn my dark room into a huge bathroom and <laughs> and then I work on the screen on the computer and um, how did you get into professional photography i mean you you were an assistant as well yes PAs? yes uh, it's really important to assist uh, Especially when you change photographers, not when you stick to one photographer. That's what I tell to all my assistants also in Italy. I have uh, regularly, um, somebody that stays with me for a couple of years, but then I try to push them to um, work with others, but at the same time also do their own work, their own uh, photography. Because then bec they become just uh, a copycat of my lights, but they don't have my taste. So. It's like they cannot compete at the same level, um, and they forget their soul. So it's a, it's a pity to stay it's too much with me. So I'm happy to teach them the lights, which is really important, but then they have to walk with their feet. 
otherwise they are just hired by uh, maybe the same clients I have but for the second line for the lookbook for the less important jobs so which is a little bit sad if you just stay stuck there yeah. and um, how many photographers did you assist um, four or five yeah, over a few years yeah two years R right after the school of uh, photography, which was kind of like a university of photography from nine in the morning till six. Um, and then my teacher told me after the second year, that was, that was four years of school. He was like, uh, okay, you already know pretty much the, uh, what you have to know, like the studio lights, because that was mostly focused on still life, which is really important to learn, because then you get how to know how to work with your lights, uh, which is the basic of photographers, if you want to work in studio especially. Um, what was I saying? Still lives. Two years. Yes, my teacher. Mm. My teacher was like, okay, now the basics are there. Uh, go develop your, uh, your taste and also how to work on the set. Because it's really different when you are doing still life by yourself uh, in a room rather than being on a set with 14 people <coughs> that you have to direct. You have to tell them exactly what to do, uh, see who's behaving and who's not, especially the director who's not behaving, you have to know how to then work through his moods and the only way is to be on the field. So. And I was happy to work for different kind of photographers. There was uh, this Italian one, Gianpaolo Barbieri, who uh, was famous in the 70s, especially for fashion. Um, a great taste, a great a cinematography taste. Another photographer I worked with uh, was really good in the studio. He had a huge studio, 500 meter square studios. Uh, I was cleaning the toilet, I was doing everything there because you have to start from the basics. Um, but then slowly he even uh, he gave me space to um, even take care of his archive. So editing, which is also very important. I learned through seeing all his thousands of slides uh, what can work and what not. So I started tossing his lights and he trusted me. Hopefully it was a good job. And um, then was a couple of other photographers for uh, reportage. I don't know if you call it reportage in, uh, in English, but uh, it's more like street style kind of. Um, but it wasn't really my story because you really have to catch moments. I'd rather build up the whole situation rather than uh, feeling the, the moment. I like what's before it. I like to um, have an idea, <coughs> possibly inspired by exhibitions or art or something that I've seen around, and then put together all the pers persons that are going to work with you. Um, because the fashion photography is a lot about the team. It's not a one-man uh, job. While I feel like other kind of photography is more like uh, for National Geographic and stuff like that, it's you and nobody else. Passion is all about the team, about directing them and about choosing them. So you are very specific about the individuals you work with on set probably then as well? About the who? About the individuals you work with on set. Y yes, yes. I like to... Um, stick to the ones I feel they have the same vision, the same taste. Uh, for example, the guy with the hair for this girl, um, seems like nothing has been done, but actually we went through a couple of hairstyles because she came in the morning with a perfectly straightened hair and I wanted to be romantic, I wanted to be a prayer of my light. Uh, so uh, curls, movement, nothing too rigid. But she thought that she looked better with straightened hair, so she came in the morning completely straightened. So we had to tra transform her, but um, the hand of the, hair, uh, the hairstylist the, was to give the right curl. Because you see, they're not all symmetrical. They're not just done with a baby leaf turn, and then you have the curls. They like worked with the hands. Um, and it's all these details you might not see, but if she had a head like this, it wouldn't be the same. Or even if she was sad with just to uh, bend her hair down. Um, 
and even the choice of, for example, the guy, those are just natural here, but another hairstylist would have been like, I need to show that I can do something, because they like to do a lot, they like to show that uh, yeah, they worked to, uh, how to say, um, to gain the money. Mm. But sometimes it's just, it's also good to st uh, do a step back. But in the very mature hairstylist to do that. Like sometimes I have to fight with some hairstylists to really want to do something, but they're not understanding the vision. Mm. So it's a lot of personal also involved. Yeah. And then you, you showed us this, this is an editorial. Um, yeah, this is a magazine who um, doesn't like retouching. You're not allowed to do any retouching, which I'm really happy about. You might say, yes, but there's the image of the universe that has been uh, overimposed. But because they allow to have the old techniques, the um, analogic technique. So if in the dark room you can put two slides on top of each other and have that effect, then uh, you're allowed to do it uh, digitally. Um, and it was inspired by an uh, Asian artist, uh, that's why this uh, peaceful transformation and uh, metamorphosis of uh, the Congolese snail that's going to receive the soul of uh, something not very identified but is feeling that it's trapped, so that's why it's got those um, laces around. And everything was studied before, even the color of that the little lace because I didn't like it white, it had to be uh, like uh, Asian red. Um, and then that um, kind of cloud is ink that I shot before um, to be able then to overimpose it there. And I didn't want it to be uh, too fluffy, like candy floss. Uh, took quite a lot of shots to obtain a specific one. And um, everything was shot on set. For example, this image here, you might not see well, but there are some uh, stick insects on those branches, which were alive, they were real. So we had to source them before. Uh, luckily, they were very cooperative. Basically, you just, uh, <laughs> you just touch them and they just stay there. They just go a little bit like this. <laughs> they like to go like that. So, and Everybody, all the people on the set were in love with those insects. But we had to keep them away from the chameleon, which was also real. Um, and the whole thing was shot in, uh, the story was shot in uh, December in Milano. And it's very cold in December, it's like snow, it was snowing outside. So the chameleon had to be kept in a box uh, with the heating system and we had to spray him every uh, three hours, otherwise the skin was going to get ruined. And we had to uh, carry him in the car uh, inside this polystyrene box uh, with a couple of crickets next to him. And he was really the Instagram star of, of the day. <laughs> and it was like a picture of the chameleon, the chameleon was changing colors, They're like, ooh, now the color is better, let's take another one. Okay. <laughs> so everybody had lots of fun with him. And we had to wait for him to arrive at the right moment, at the right point of the, um, of the branch. Because when it was too low, it didn't look, look unbalanced, the image. But the fact that it's close to the arm is actually gives more, even more power to the guy's arms. And December is not peach season, so those peaches have to be imported. Um, the, we couldn't find the peaches with the branch attached. So that branch is something else with eucalyptus leaves attached to it. So a lot of work from the set designer, who worked for free because this was a editorial with no budget. So it was a self um, uh, paid, basically I paid for everything, even the chameleon, which was the most expensive one. <laughs> And, uh, and the peaches. Oh, the peaches were really expensive too in December. It was crazy. Nice. The snail was very cheap. <laughs> she was given for free, actually. Even if she was this big, she was a Congolese snail. 
Wow, and she didn't eat anything, poor snail. Like, like, apparently they can go for months without eating the snail. <laughs> and this one is this a makeup is, campaign. This is a bit older in terms of timeline, when was this? Uh, this one is a bit older, yes, I would say it's three years old, this one. Um, and this is a typical example of when you work for a project when there's the um, clear uh, layout, also from the art director, uh, but just drawn. And then you have to make it happen. So you have to bring the, the rain, you have to bring the umbrella, the proper umbrella, because it cannot be a different color, it just didn't match. If it was the skin tone, it would have been too uh, division. Your eye just goes too much towards the end of the image. I just wanted the skin to be framed by the blue of the um, uh, trench coat and by the green of the umbrella. And the umbrella had to be also expensive since it's quite a, uh, an expensive brand of makeup. Um, you couldn't have something cheap like a, um, one of those Chinese umbrellas that break when the wind comes. So that's a, I specifically asked to the set design to look for an umbrella with a tip, with a wooden tip to give a sense of uh, luxury. And even the curving of the umbrella, um, because if the, if the umbrella was too flat, the curve was almost straight. I needed to have that specific curve, so it was one of those very, very deep umbrellas, um, which was difficult to um, orientate according to the, the light, because sometimes it was too much on her face, so much, sometimes it was too much in the back, and at the same time it was raining on her. So everything is like really happening there. Yeah. It's, uh, it's not uh, over imposure. The only thing that is done there clearly that I don't like and not happy about is that shadow next to her mouth. It was requested by the art director because he wanted some more darkness next to the lips. But I feel that it's too much. It's not really needed. And Oh, this was another editorial for the same non-retouching non magazine. What's that magazine's name? Naked But Safe. Naked But Safe. Um, she's not completely naked. She does have something you can see. She still has the underwear on. But I wanted as much skin as possible. So his head was placed there to, to help. Mm. But all the rest of the position was actually made by a layout that I designed. Like the, we did uh, 20 pictures in one day. Usually editorial you do maybe eight, 10. But because it was another free magazine, another um, self-paid editorial, I wanted everything to be perfect and decided before. So I made a 20 images uh, layout. And then I s uh, usually print them before in A4 format stick them on the polystyrene, like a wall of polystyrene. Um, then one by one, uh, I uh, tick them off. Like once, uh, so the, the stylist, the makeup, uh, the design, everybody can see where I'm going, and then it can be faster, instead of explaining by words which are not good in. So I'd rather work on with, with the visual. Um, so then everybody was super fast, col collaborative, um, just not that model on the left, he was a little bit of a diva because when he heard there were group shots, he was like, no, I want only uh, single shots. <laughs> so after this he left, uh, it's okay. <laughs> it happens quite uh, often. This was shot here in Cape Town for another Italian magazine. It was inspired by um, uh, a movie, The Night Porter. I think it's called Night Porter in, uh, in English. I don't know if you know about it. It's like mm -hmm. a 70s movie. Mm, it's a bit of an S&M thing. <laughs> That's why she has that kind of policeman hat yeah. and, and leather straps. Uh, these are quite soft images of the story. But I wanted to give this edge to a story that was um, born as a fairy tale. That's where we are in the um, magic forest with this amazing trees, almost like Harry Potter thing. But I felt it could have been become a little bit corny, a little bit cheap and cheesy. So I gave that 
strong edge and, and keep everything very graphic. That's why the, also the black and white. Um, but also didn't want it too commercial, like uh, too many leaves, too many happiness, too many greenness. So I put a, uh, the Bamberg uh, butterfly all around. So I had a couple of assistants going on the trees, climbing, putting butterflies all around. It was quite cool. And just lit by the sun. The sun is behind and it creates the magic. But you have to get inventive now and then to be not too boring, not too commercial. And this is one of the recent jobs. Um, you can see the style is changing. Like the, one, the previous one was much more rigid and, and graphic. Now I'm going to something softer, more romantic, more real. And even here, uh, no retouching. Uh, mm -hmm. I, try, I just do grading, but the light is done on set with uh, some gelatins. It's in a studio. And this is one of the moments when you are lucky because the day before shooting, we had no floor. We didn't know what to put on the floor um, because there was supposed to be wood, but then the wood disappeared mm -hmm. somehow. And I saw next to our studio, they were planting lots of pots in, on, on the street. So I asked them how much it cost, and they're like, uh, it was cheap enough to buy 20 bags of ground and bring them in the studio. But those uh, ferns are actually painted by my agent's son, who was uh, very happy to collaborate and still telling me he got intoxicated by the, the gold paint. <laughs> but it's lovely when everybody just get together and start doing things. It was explained like crazy. And she was so nice, it was just mm, <laughs> dancing. She was actually, we discovered she was a dancer before. And the story was inspired by Pina Bausch. Uh, the dancer, uh, one of the f first ones to dance like that bare feet. So she was rolling in the ground, no problem. It's wonderful when you have somebody that can collaborate like that. Instead of being like, oh no, my feet, no, I'm finicky. You know, then it turns into a nightmare. Um, um, how, do you, how do you find working with models? Do you find that you, you are someone that directs a lot? Or mm. do you find that you are someone that lets them do what they want and see it more as a collaboration? Or does it depend on what you're shooting and what? Depends on, on the project. On this project, I had images of the dance of Pina Bausch, of the choreography. So I was showing her where I was going, like the croppings. Um, but it's lovely when then somebody understands perfectly and then you just let go, let go. And then the day is really easy. Other times you really have to tell them even where to put the fingers. Because for example, um, it's not easy even to put the hand like that. Somebody would be like this, somebody would be like this, too hard, but she's quite soft in her legs. Other times you have to tell the model even to lift your finger, lift the middle finger more. Uh, depends to be more plastic. Yeah. See that hand is standing. Like, uh, and she, we even keep, kept her, um, like, it's nice to have surprises in this case. She had piercings on, so that nose ring we decided to keep to give another bit of a interesting edge to the images. Ooh, okay, this is another one of those makeup clients that want something specific, and then your task is to achieve, for example, this uh, lake of gold. Because you know when you put gold or, the, or any kind of uh, metallic powder, it goes uh, down, it sinks. So I had to send the makeup artist uh, to find a, spe a special powder that they only sell in Paris. Luckily she was French and she flew to Milano from Paris for the shoot. Um, and we did test and test so that it could look like uh, proper gold. Um, the most difficult thing for this uh, was to have her at the right level in the water. Another shoot in uh, winter in Milano, so it was freezing cold the water. We had to retouch a lot of the skin there. Uh, but she was a trooper. She also didn't mind. She was paid well, of course. <laughs> so she was just like 
floating with underneath specific level of uh, plastic no, so that you couldn't go too much down. And the makeup took three hours to make. So you arrive in the morning, by the time the water was finally filled up because we had to build a tank uh, um, mm. with a meter high and with the whole inside black because otherwise you would see through mm. and there would be reflections of light on her. So, and then when you put the plastic, you realize that the plastic is it's also floating. Mm. So you have to start pushing it down with weights, with sandbags. And they have to be black sandbags. Um, how, how involved are you when you say a client gives you this, this is their idea? How involved do you become or how involved do you want to be in, in terms of the concept from your client? Do you, do you prefer to just shoot what they, they give you? Or? Advertising, in, in advertising specifically, um, so not fashion, like this I consider more like advertising. Um, I love to see the layout and then make the magic work through the light, through uh, technical details, um, pushing the makeup artist to do something uh, that the client might like. Um, so in this case, it's <coughs> nice to have, to, to have boundaries, lots of boundaries. Mm -hmm. It's very stimulating. But otherwise, for fashion, um, I like to put a lot of taste in it. It's what makes me different from other photographers. It's about the taste. Because anybody can learn technique if it, they really push themselves to learn it, like the lights and the equipment. Uh, but then to really stand out, you have to uh, stick to your feelings and your passions. Mm -hmm. So um, I love art, I love architecture. So I try to put all my taste in it. Here, I'll just put my technical experience and my taste in makeup. Um, because this makeup artist was trying to do something to, uh, I would say, like a drag queen. <laughs> so it's, it was going very close to it. And I felt it was too much for the, to the, to the client. Mm. And then everybody was happy and we got, we got confirmed for four seasons for the same client. Nice. This was a magazine. It's also one of the most recent ones. Uh, I don't know if it seems kind of um, natural and spontaneous, that was the goal, to go not too rigid and uh, uh, stiff, but there was also a layout on this one, mm -hmm. because it's another one of those magazines where um, you have to obtain as much as you can for your book, because you're not paid, mm -hmm. um, so at least get something out of it as much as I can. So I try always to aim for 20 images because then you might love only four or five and that's what you say for your book. So then the best is to have the layout prepared with uh, everything goes in it. The only thing that happened here is we realized that with all the white clothes, um, see those flowers on the sides? They were actually big compositions. They were supposed to be all around the models. Uh, and that's when the taste told me and, and the stylist, um, a really good one, that they were killing the fashion. So we wanted to have something more pure. But I was in love with the flowers still, so I decided to create that graphic um, combination. Also because after the first 10 pictures without flowers, it was boring, kind of boring. But at least I'd like to... Um, I sneak some flowers in during the photo shoot, like under the plastic, I was putting the flowers inside and leaving imperfections. Because the first thing that might catch your eye is the, maybe the hardness of the face of the model or the fact that they are so pure. But then I can go still around and find something imperfect that makes it more interesting. The dirt, the dirt on the table, uh, those funny feathers uh, for the styling um, and her skin also I didn't uh, retouch I like to funny enough she's another one with the earring the, the ring on the nose okay it's becoming a theme in my portfolio <laughs> and um, the scar is still there and you see all the ears are red the hands uh, are red because perfection is becoming very boring to me um, 
anybody can use Photoshop and turn something into plastic, but it's very early 2000s. Mm. I'd rather have imperfections and humanity in the, in, in the shots. Okay, this is advertising, so the task on the left was not to break her neck, because she had to turn the whole day like this, in the right position, and good hairstylists who can have the hair perfectly going in the right direction. Uh, meeting before choosing with the uh, client the color of the, um, um, the watches, how many there to be. So we, had, we did two weeks of uh, PPM production meetings for uh, having just those kind of watches. When was, when was that swatch ad shot? Um, if I'm not mistaken, it could be 2007 and 8. I'm not sure. Mm. Have, you, have you always balanced advertising and fashion? Um, or was there a period where you were shooting much more advertising and now moving towards more fashion or vice versa? Mm, not really. It just depends on who comes and see if the project, I feel comfortable with the project. Um, if it's advertising, um, I need to, once I see the layout, if I can actually do it or not. If, for example, it's a party with uh, hundreds of people that have to be spontaneous and shoot something uh, like a uh, reportage, and then I'm like, mm, maybe you don't need me, you need somebody much more instantaneous. Um, otherwise, I might put people too much in place in the right order and then there's not so much spontaneity anymore. Mm. Um, here uh, they showed me a, a girl that is turning with her head with, uh, with some watches um, and then and they want a white background so I just brought a light that I thought <coughs> was, was going to be nice and warm and I knew the model before because we basically started together so I knew that she could deliver a nice face, a nice expression, and would have been also a pleasure to work with because otherwise one day in advertising, trying to get the right position of the hand, the right position of the head, could be quite tiring and stressful. But if the whole team is nice together, they wanted a different hairstyle, so I was like, no, I need my team. Otherwise I'm not, I cannot guarantee you the result. When you shoot in Milan, do you work with the same, or try and work with the same team every time? Yes, it's, um, I shrank the quantity of hairstylists and makeup artists that I work with, let's say, to uh, four and five people, like four hairstylists and four makeup artists, because of course you don't have the exclusivity on the person, so you need to be able to book the person that has to be free, uh, sometimes they are not, because one is doing something else in Paris, the other one is in Miami, uh, so um, I start from the, the one that I work the most with and then see who's available. Mm. And the Renault ad? The Renault, I ju only shot that little tiny girl on that corner, but um, it required a lot of meetings um, because that uh, skyscraper is not real, it's been done uh, in 3D, in 3D, uh, be reproduced digitally, uh, but at least I wanted to have the specific metal also underneath her that could remind the Chrysler building, and they couldn't use the Chrysler images because of copyright problems. So that's why, but well, they tried to request the, the Chrysler the rights for it, but uh, they were saying no. So they had to pay the digital a lot to recreate that skyscraper. It's a question over here. Hi. Hi. Um, I want to ask you, um, I mean, most of the images we've seen tonight um, are on, like, the really quite um, detailed and well thought out and researched. Um, have you, in the recent years, found yourself in a not so controlled environment? And how do you, with not such a big budget, for instance, like, and how do you, um, find like directing in that situation or photographing that situation and which do you prefer do you prefer to be rather directing all the time making things making sure that everything is like done to perfection or 
Would you like us to just like go with the feeling in a not so controlled environment? Um, I love control. I love it sometimes too much. I've been learning actually with uh, experience to let it go and trust the, the people that I work with. That's why selecting the, the team is really important because then they might even surprise you with something that you didn't even think about. But at least I put all the guides in place so that they are free then to do what they feel like they can do. Still my trust. And, uh, but sometimes surprises are really nice. I can't see here. I don't know if there's some uh, images with the, that surprise, but even the models can surprise me. Uh, it's the human factor that it mostly is what makes you go like, oh, I didn't think about that, cool. Uh, like, um, there's a really good model. I don't know if we have it here with the images, uh, the one a little bit wet. Did you put it in the presentation? I'm sure it's in there. No. Is it? I can't remember. Well, she was... Um, this, the whole story was supposed to be very um, structured, stru structured and rigid. But then uh, when she put her feet in the studio, she changed the music. She was like, no, I don't like this music. Uh, she put her own seat. She came with the, the whole uh, bunch of um, uh, CDs and went in her mood. She started like moving and browsing, like not even counting. Sometimes I, I have to, well, most of the time I have to count, like one, two, three, and then flash and the model is ready. This one didn't even want to be directed. She was just floating and going. And the whole, her expressions in all the shots were so good. They feel like, oh, good, thank you. You're like, you want to really thank the model. Very rare, very rare. Nice. Uh, for example, here. Um, well, we had a bit of an accident. I was sh we were shooting the couture um, in Paris, and the f it was on two days. The first day, we set up the gray background, and then it rained in overnight, so the whole thing was ruined. But then I was like, okay, cool, let's turn it into something actually useful. So I started tearing all that paper and uh, putting it together, uh, almost like a cubist, uh, Picasso, going crazy. And, and this is when I actually feel like I can express my passion for art and for building something. It's like doing my own set is like, oh wow, I love it. And, um, and we have to work with a really tight timing because the, the fashion, the couture, is a specific collection that you cannot keep even for the whole day. Basically, you shoot during the couture shows. Mm -hmm. And um, each cloth, for example, the one on the left is by Giorgio Armani, the one on the right is Christian Dior. And it comes in with a box, uh, with a security, they keep it there for a um, couple of hours, not even, and in that time frame you have to make it work. The hairstylist has to be very fast, uh, the makeup also. That's when I feel like a hairstylist is a genius, when he invented to make a bow under the, the chin of the model, which was not expected. Those are one of the surprises, you go like, oh, I love this job because somebody can just create something like that. Or the makeup artist used a uh, white mascara on her lashes to give a bit of a dusty feeling, which are un unexpected. But when you do couture, you, the clothes are so amazing mm -hmm. that you don't have to create too much of a story. Also because they don't always match together, because every designer has a story of his own. So at least you want to create a box. And th in this case, my box was like a gray and colorful background. And then you put the clothes in there, in that box. Um, but it's so fantastic clothes that you don't have to really worry too much. This was shot in Milano in a location that now doesn't exist anymore because it's been bought by a Russian. It was a private apartment, uh, but they were selling the apartment and during the sale they just made temporarily um, a setup with those furnitures from a famous design shop in the center of Milano. Um, 
And the ger this was a German client who wanted to um, shoot in an apartment with this woman. So to me, it was a bit like going also to another boring situation. So <coughs> I took inspiration from uh, the, uh, an American painter, Edward Hopper, um, which makes some little bit strange si mm, situations. And the light is also quite pictorial. Uh, I used a lot of um, gelatins. So you see the highlights are um, a little bit greenish and the shadows are more like magenta because that's the, the style of Edward Hopper. The shadows are always, they have some kind of coloring in and the skins are always kind of green. A little bit like David Lynch also, mm -hmm. the, the feeling of weirdness going on. Mm -hmm. I always like to put a bit of weirdness in. So David Lynch is one of my favorite uh, directors. And the model came with uh, this big hair and this thick eyebrows so the hairstyle is like never no, gone we have to slip them back manly make them like a man the side part and the makeup artist uh, um, knew i love to bleach eyebrows of the model so it's like i have the bleach should we bleach them like okay, go for it <laughs> and then she turned into this kind of alien so um, from then on we took out all that commercial feeling that there was in it. Also because I was an editorial, so editorial don't want to do something commercial, otherwise you're known for being commercial while doing editorial. Mm. Like it doesn't bring you anywhere. Nice. This was a designer, it was a catalog for a designer. And this was also planned quite a lot because each outfit I paired with an image of uh, travels that I did. Uh, so those One are your images. You might recognize. Backgrounds are your shots. Yeah. Uh, during mm, travels, like two of them are in Tokyo, and the one in the middle is Cape Town. So um, I, f I was looking through all my archive of images, and uh, they sent me before the clothes. I knew there were 24 clothes, and which one they were, the collection. Um, so I paired them on my screen together with uh, the backgrounds, and uh, it took quite a lot on, long time to have the right colors with uh, uh, complementing the outfits. The, um, but I, the only thing I couldn't do was printing them on the, they're not prints, they are digitally put on a gray uh, flat uh, panel. Oh, wow. Because there was no budget. I mean, there was the budget for the shoot, but they didn't want to pay for the set designing. So I try to keep it as real as possible. Even the holes on the panel, all the little imperfections that what detail, the details that make the difference. Mm. And this was going to be a disaster before we, sh uh, the first day that we shot, because we arrived on set, this was also here in Cape Town, and there was no grass. We were supposed to shoot in a grass really high, and the vacation was promised to be very full of grass and she would have been romantic uh, inside all lying inside this grass uh, big volumes um, big volumes of the outfits um, but then the main thing was missing <laughs> and there was no other uh, field in Cape Town where we could find uh, the uh, wheat, wheat field, mm -hmm. wheat field. So luckily I already had those structures um, that I could play with and we had to change the plan com completely. She had different hair, different makeup. So from all heavier, while her, she's more romantic and uh, lush, everything went clean, clean makeup, clean hair. I go to the basic, use the sky and use those lines. So from something much richer, I became something more pure. So you have to be fast on thinking, but that's what you do with also the the stylist. And but you also have to. I was when I start the idea, I'm really attached to my idea. I really love what's been studied and uh, thought, and I want it to happen. But then you have to be modest enough to say like, okay, no, it's not going to happen. Let's forget it and swap completely idea. Um, and that's how you save sometimes the, the situation. This was in Atlantis, also another magazine. 
Mm, here, the makeup was quite important because, unfortunately, the makeup artist came with the matte makeup because she didn't know where exactly we were going to go. Um, and it wasn't really uh, feeling right. Uh, so we put some gloss inside the MAC makeup and tried to make it really, really glossy. And that was really annoying for her because of the sand was keeping on going in her eyes and the makeup artist had to clean it continuously. And the assistant had to clean the sand from the mirror, which was getting scratched by her heels and the sand. Uh, lots of things happening, lots of people involved. And the sun was melting. Uh, those mirrors are um, boxes that I, I design. I even, I, when I do this kind of set, I work on the dimensions. So I design and Photoshop the whole set with the measurements and I give it to the set designer. Um, I didn't know that the glue melts when this, under the sun of Cape Town. So this was a two days uh, shoot and we had to keep on reattaching them because they were also sliding off. Um, Oh, and the other thing about this, it, you don't see any footprints. In the sand? Because the footprints are horrible, otherwise on the sand, yes. So this is where experience tells you to bring a leaf blower to continuously yeah. do ah, those things. That's amazing. And then the leaf blower puts the sand on her face and then again on the makeup artist. <laughs> and so. But she was also a trooper. She was a fantastic model. This is one of those that you... Um, I remember a moment when we finished working, we had such a good day that then the, sun, the sunset started and she was like, uh, she started crying because uh, she had to leave in the, in the same night but she wanted to stay and work more together uh, and then we all started crying, <laughs> it was beautiful. <laughs> okay, so um, two very different things, the first one on the right it's one of my first big catalogs. Um, How long ago was that? Uh, this was shot in uh, negative with uh, still the films. And this was 2003, I think, 2003. Um, men, men, men suits can be quite boring to shoot. And also shooting in the house can be very boring, very commercial. So I took inspiration from um, Orson Welles, the director, mm. uh, the movie uh, Citizen K, I think it's called Citizen K. Sometimes I have a problem with the names between Italian, they're all translated. They translate the, the people working, they adapt, and they even change the title of the, the movie. So mm. like the other day I was telling to my assistants, you have to watch this movie, uh, Silence of the Lambs. And Italian is like, uh, Except translation is Silenzio degli Agnelli. So I was like, you have to see Silenzio degli Agnelli. And they're like, what? They're like, oh, I haven't seen it. You have to write it down. And I was like, yes, the one with her. They're like, oh, but it's the silence of the innocents. Like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay, whatever. Yeah. Like, funny names. So, um, like, for example, the Citizen K is it's translated into fourth power. It's like, what? Because of the press, whatever. So the nice thing of that um, movie are the, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but the proportions are quite weird. Uh, people, um, they st in the same room, when they get closer to the camera, they look um, smaller than when they start from the back of the, the room. And it's because Orson Well used to uh, build all his sets, and not in, uh, in houses, but in properly built, with the back of the room smaller. So the, the ceiling always comes down, so it gives you more of an impression of a wide angle. Okay. He was also really quite mm -hmm. meticulous. That's why I really love his mm -hmm. style. And even uh, they built lenses for him. They were building uh, lenses that could focus in the front and in the back. So you could see the person speaking on the back of the room and the person speak close to the camera. Otherwise, there would have been one of them would have been out of focus. That's why he always had that crazy follow focus that people were crazy for. Mm -hmm. And um, so I wanted to play on the proportions. That's why I put that guy looks a bit smaller. He's almost on the same level. And uh, I mixed those kind of proportions with uh, uh, French uh, movies, like Truffaut, um, where they have that 
weird feeling of abandonment, of loneliness. So the couple there is not touching, they're not romantic, not kissing, like mm -mm, no, 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 graphic and uh, lots of shadows. Um, noir, uh, a mm. new kind of noir. Yeah. And I had some kind of freedom, if it was a fashion catalog. There, I had no freedom at all. So the Diamond, Diamonds campaign, uh, they came with me to with uh, just a drawing with uh, everybody exactly in those positions. And even the light was, uh, was imagined coming from the hand over explaining me how much the diamond has to shine on her face. Um, and there was no umbrellas, nothing that could have done that effect. So I decided to paint the, the back of her hand white, like a very thick white paint, and then shine one of these, these lights, uh, the cones, the snoot. The snoot. But these snoots are not uh, focused enough, mm. so we had to look for uh, one with a double lens to be able to focus exactly on her hand. Right? So it was shot basically just with uh, one snoot, the double, um, double head torch, reflected on her palm of the hand, and then some lights more in the, in the back of the group of people, because everybody's really there, it's not um, uh, computer, it's like people have been paid to be a, a shade. <laughs> <laughs> and even selected and casted, like it was a difficult casting. And, uh, and this is foam shot as well. This was still foam, yeah. Then digitalized because um, I was still turning digital on my phones even from 2000. Because uh, I love Photoshop, uh, I started with Photoshop 3, so now we are CC, it's not even a number anymore, now it's just CC. <laughs> and um, they want a specific color of the background, so we had to look for the paper with the right color. Then it didn't have the right color, so I filled it with the gelatins. Uh, and the position of the hand also. Like the most difficult thing, since it was foam, was to get the shot where she looks really good and uh, the light is coming from the right direction. Um, just that this ugly star is made with computer, but they wanted that. I found it quite cheap, but they wanted that to emphasize everything. And there's only one and two lights, basically. And she's just, the one on the right is just getting some reflection from the, the back of the, the model of the, with the, with the green dress. Which is quite interesting also, the fact that the dress is, um, looks ex expensive. <laughs> But it's been made up by, um, on purpose for the shoot, as a copy of a Versace dress. Uh, because you cannot shoot Versace if it's not a Versace campaign. Um, you're going to be in troubles. There was a stylist who once was shoot by a client, Italian client, because she put their shoes into another campaign. And the stylist in Milano, when we do advertising, they take the clothes from the showroom, so they don't buy. They don't rent. They go to the press office, they collect a lot of clothes or from the magazine. So it's collections that are not out yet. They will be out in six months. So of course if the campaign comes out and those shoes are not in the shops yet, you use the one of the showroom. Mm. Big troubles. That stylist lost her house. It's crazy. Yeah. 250,000 uh, euros because she put the, sh the wrong shoes. So every time the, the, the stylist tell me like, uh, Unless it's advertising when it's, they're really careful that no dress is going to come in the image that is not uh, mm. legal. Um, the studies bring other things and tell you, okay, can you modify the shoe? Can you change the color? Can you change the heel? Can you change the, um, uh, the Swarovski on it? So then legally they are safe. So all the time they ask me, like, please can you see the pictures? You see? Okay, I don't see that. Okay, it doesn't look like the such. Okay, cool. <laughs> And this was another um, editorial. Uh, what I like here is that I was free enough to play with uh, visuals. Um, and this is another shot of the sea that I took from other trips and then I like to combine it. So I like the feeling of the, the, that sailor on the left together with uh, 
like killing on the right and um, and the sea. It's all like sensations, all like feelings. Mm. And it's nice to match and put together. But it was also another 20 uh, pages editorial like set up before. So uh, the position that he's having is the one uh, on the right that I already had on the layout. On the left, I just wanted him to move, just show me something. And the hairstyle is also very important because if he had some dry hair, it wouldn't have given the same effect. Lots of oil on the arms to give that wet effect. Otherwise, after one second, it's dry and um, doesn't look so like a triton anymore. And this was one of those special moments where after you do a campaign, the everything was so set up, everything organized, uh, the client is happy and it's out of the studio, they go, okay, let, let's do something fun. And with the beauties you can do that because there's no specific clothes that no. have to be there to create the story. You just create the story with the hair, the makeup, and maybe a detail. So during the shoot, uh, I saw those jewels, so I asked the stylist to keep them for, for us. And um, so we just got inspired by a porn star, an 80s porn star, Ilona Staller, which was wearing always the flowers here. So we turned it into something a bit more elegant. Um, and the fun part is that after you do a photo shoot, uh, that has been quite tiring and the model is tired. Uh, in this case, she wanted to do more pictures. She was happy to work more. She actually was booked uh, under budget for her rate. But because three years ago we worked before together and after another catalog, I took some beauties and she still had them in the portfolio. Um, my agent called her agency and said, like, listen, we don't have the budget. Can you maybe ask her if she's willing to come for the, for the job? So they answered back, yes, she's going to come, she's going to do the job, she's happy to do it with Stefano, but uh, can you please do some, sh some shots after? So like, oh, fantastic, then you're mm -hmm. so happy that you appreciate it and this exchange. Mm -hmm. And that happens only when the model is, is a smart girl. Right? She's mm -hmm. super smart, she loves to read, she has lots of culture. Um, so it's a nice understanding. This was inspired by the exhibition that was in Cape Town, actually, the Trechikov exhibition. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, he's the mm -hmm. Chinese girl, the one with the blue face. Um, and I want to play with the flowers because Trechikov was kind of kitsch, so it's nice to play on that edge mm -hmm. and turn it into something more high fashion. So he's fully dressed in Prada. Um, and I would, not too sweet, also that's why some, uh, the rose, for example, is all uh, broken, is all uh, ruined. Um, you will see in the high definition that it's not a pretty little flower, it's more like a rotten. <coughs> and a bit of quirkiness, so the hairstylist also just pulls the hair with a brush. A lot of the hairstylist goes with designs. Um, instead of having a head that is fixed and hard, nice to give the soul and play with it, almost like painting also with the hair. And it was shot so the flowers are overimposed uh, after, but I shot them in the studio the same day uh, with the lights of the studio, so that you have the right shadows, um, the direction of the light is correct. Because yeah. sometimes if you don't have the same light, you can put any flower but it's not going to match. Because you, I don't know, to me it's just like, it looks wrong, there's no balance. Mm. This was also another couture sh uh, shooting in Paris. Um, the difficult part was to find the location. There was like that, uh, ruined, and we found it in this designer's house who's crazy enough to have this house from the 1700, but just quickly painted by his boyfriend in some funny ways. So to make to age the house, um, and it's another one of those one hour for the for the for the the dress is coming dresser put it in put it on the set and go, and she was fantastic because she's one of those also that knows how to pose, really really professional. Um, character wise, not necessarily you have to you have to click with the model like uh, you're gonna have to hang out with them after. 
But you do understand each other, you do understand when, they understand that you know where the light is going uh, 